Dear friends, whenever I come to St. Timothy's Parish, I'm often asked some theological questions. And the same thing happened tonight. The very first person I met, a deeply theological question caught me off guard. Bishop, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl tomorrow? <laughs> Dear friends, as I mentioned, beginning tonight, the church in our diocese and throughout our country celebrates World Marriage Day and National Marriage Week with the theme called to the joy of love. What a powerful way to uplift the beautiful vocation of marriage, that sacred union of one man and one woman, faithful, fruitful, and forever. And tonight at this Mass, we give thanks to God for all the married couples here present and throughout our diocese, for your faithful witness and for the gift you are to your children and families and indeed, to the entire church. Before speaking directly to our married couples, I am aware there could be some single persons who are here or joining us via live stream who are discerning their vocation in life. Please remember, the Lord has a unique call and plan for each one of you. So make time to listen to his voice. Ask for his help in prayer and for the grace you need to say yes to his will. For it's that yes that will always lead us to the joy we are seeking. I am also aware that perhaps present here tonight and certainly throughout our diocese, there are divorced Catholics. And I want to reassure you that our Lord and his church love you. And we seek to accompany you and to help you in any way possible. In fact, just this morning in our diocese, our marriage and family life office conducted a conference for divorced Catholics, offering pastoral and spiritual guidance and encouragement. And we always stand ready to do so. Dear married couples, I sure hope that tonight you are renewed in living the sacrament of marriage and the beautiful vocation that God has entrusted to you. Remember the ultimate goal of your vocation is to help each other get to heaven. You are a sign of God's love that occurred on the day you celebrated the sacrament of marriage. Remember the definition of marriage we all learned? An outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. So marry couples, I always say. So we should be able to state that whenever we look at, look at you, we see the, uh, the love that Christ has for his bride, the church, and all his people. That's what you're the sign of. And so your love, like his, must be selfless and sacrificial. It must be kind and patient and always ready to forgive. Someone in our world may ask, how is it possible to live that kind of love. And no matter how many years you are married, 
I am sure you would all give the same answer. Only by the grace of God. So tonight, dear married couples, promise to keep God at the center of your marriage. Each day, renew your yes to him and those promises you made to each other on the day you were married. Allow quality time just to be with each other and enjoy each other's company. Pray together and constantly ask for God's help. Dear friends, no matter our vocation, no matter our state in life, I believe we all learn a valuable lesson from the prophet Jeremiah in our first reading today. He uses two images to describe two different ways of living. He says some people are like a barren bush in the desert, struggling just to survive. They are the people who trust the empty promises of the world and turn away from the Lord. And then he says, there are other people who are like a tree, planet near running waters, flourishing and thriving. They are the people who trust in the Lord and walk in his ways. And in tonight's gospel, Jesus calls us to follow that path. In giving us the Beatitudes, he radically transforms the values of the world. And he says this, counted among the blessed are the poor and the suffering and those who are mourning. They are the people, Jesus says, who avoid self-sufficiency self and complacency and who seek first the kingdom of God, the one alone who can give us the joy and the peace for which we all long. That is true for all married couples. That is true for all of us, dear friends in Christ. So once again, renew thanks to all the married couples here and throughout our diocese as we ask God to continue to shower his blessings upon you and your families. And dear friends, as we will soon be nourished and strengthened with the gift of the Holy Eucharist, may all of us go forth tonight reminded that all of us are called to the joy of love and to walk in the steps of the Lord so that we may be like that tree flourishing and thriving so that we may be counted among the blessed, both now and forever. Amen.